Good afternoon, everybody. Sorry that I am late. I apologize. Uh, challenging times in, uh, in Manitoba, obviously, uh, with all that is going on. You know, I uh, want to reflect a little bit on the U.S. Uh, border and uh, the disturbances going on there at Pemina. So I've had the opportunity for the last almost a decade, I think, to co-chair the Canada-U.S. Relations Committee. It's a committee of the uh, uh, Council of State Governments Midwest branch. And so I currently uh, chair with um, the Speaker of the House of Ohio, Senator Robert, I reached out to for a conversation uh, in addition to um, uh, Minister uh, Mendichenko, Public Safety Minister, to speak about some of the things that are happening at the border. But I've learned in the last 10 years as co-chair of that committee how incredibly important uh, those border crossings are. And the, the goods that move across, uh, the jobs that are related to that, how important it is to Manitoba and to Manitobans. Uh, and we can't underestimate that, that we need... Uh, goods moving across. One of the things about this pandemic is that uh, even though there's been disruption when it comes to non-business uh, travel, uh, 95 to 98 percent of the traffic over the pandemic is maintained for commercial traffic and that's been one of the great successes of the Canada-US uh, business relationship because we're not just uh, friends and allies, we're, we're partners, but we trade together because we build things together and those lines have to remain open. Um, with that in mind, you know, I recognize the frustration and challenges that uh, those who are at the border are and why they're, why they're demonstrating um, in some ways. Um, I'm not trying to minimize frustration that, that people have, um, but I also understand that there are others who are impacted and others who are um, not the least of which are truckers who rely on getting across that border. Um, my dad was a trucker for Penner International and in Steinbeck, so I spent some time uh, in, those, in those big rigs, and I've got a lot of appreciation for the work that, that they do, um, but they have to get across the border. Uh, in my conversation, uh, hopefully soon with Minister Mendenchenko, I will reemphasize the importance of that accessibility, calling upon the Trudeau government uh, to do what it can to lower the temperature, to ensure that People are being heard to work respectively to resolutions, not just at the Pemina border, but at all the border crossings uh, across Canada, not the least of which would be, you know, the uh, Windsor border crossing, the most trafficked one when it comes to commercial trade. Um, this needs to be resolved, uh, and it needs to be resolved with a federal government uh, that is willing to uh, engage uh, with people to try to come to a resolution. So I'm, I'm hopeful that, that the federal government will do that. This is, um, you know, an international border, and so it falls to their responsibility and, and um, can't have any more uh, uh, of the divisiveness uh, when it comes to some of the, the rhetoric. We have to bring that, uh, have to bring that down and, um, and ensure that we're listening to people, not always in agreement. We're not always going to agree, and that's okay. And, uh, but I think we have to sometimes understand where other people are coming from in different positions. Uh, you can be working in an ICU uh, and, and wonder why the, you know, there aren't more restrictions and, and the, you know, maybe think about those businesses that have been closed until those businesses that have been closed, you know, those owners I know sometimes think about the challenges in the hospital. They don't always have to agree with each other. But if we can put ourselves into the shoes of somebody else and, and, and try to understand why they're feeling the way they feel, that would be helpful. So I really hope that we can get the federal government to, to engage in that. You know, I would say to those who are, who are protesting um, at the border that it, it's, it's a lot of your, uh, your residents, your fellow Manitobans, some of whom might very well agree, uh, many I'm sure who will very well agree with, with some of what your uh, cause is, uh, our government uh, early on when the vaccine mandates came for the borders indicated that we asked the Trudeau government to look at a different path. In Manitoba, we didn't require vaccination for a lot of occupations. We offered options. We asked the Trudeau government to look at another path. Um, but now those who are protesting at the border, they're having an impact. I've heard from certainly many of my constituents I know will support um, these, uh, these causes, but I've also heard from constituents who've said, we need to get across the border, uh, who own trucking companies. And, and so, 
you know, I, I, I hope that they'll uh, consider that as well. I understand that there is some movement when it comes to livestock and that, and so that's appreciated, but it's important that we keep lanes open uh, at the border. Uh, you know, for Manitobans overall, uh, everybody's tired of saying it and everybody's tired of hearing it about how difficult it is, um, but it is difficult. But uh, I do think we're going to be in, in, in a better place uh, soon. We've gone through challenging times. We need to not only respect each other, but try to understand the positions of each other. Don't have to agree with those positions, but try to understand where people are coming from. That'll help, I think, a little bit in terms of, uh, of the language and the rhetoric that is sometimes uh, put out there. Uh, a little bit of understanding about uh, where it's at. Premier and Dr. Rusin will be out uh, tomorrow to talk about um, uh, health orders. Uh, as you know, uh, they're uh, coming up for renewal. Dr. Rusin talked about uh, targets that he had in terms of uh, lifting uh, restrictions and updates, and uh, they will provide you an update on the further loosening of uh, restrictions, and those announcements will come tomorrow. So, you know, I know that uh, there's a lot of people who are in, in challenging times. Uh, police have been, uh, Winnipeg police in particular, I know, have been having negotiations and discussions with those who are protesting outside of, of this building. Lots of strong feelings, lots of strong emotions I hear from, from Manitobans who have all sorts of different perspectives. I appreciate that that communication has resulted in some things, like uh, I understand less uh, honking of the horns because people live nearby here and those of you in the media you know this area well there's a lot of people who live in, in close proximity you might be some of them and uh, and i'm glad uh, from what i understand is that um, that discussion has resulted in in a bit more of a a civil uh, a procedure so that that people aren't so disturbed uh, for those who live uh, nearby in in this area and then they continue to have discussions about access of, of the roads. And so we're grateful for the lines of communication that remain open. Um, I think that is important. It is a respectful and democratic right to, uh, to protest and to have difference, uh, differences of views. Um, but there are other rights that also have to be protected. And, and those who live nearby, who need to who get to work, uh, we have to respect their rights as well. So. Uh, challenging times, I know, for Manitoba, Manitobans. I'm, I'm calling on Manitobans to uh, step back, uh, think about the reasons that, that other people feel differently than you do. Not necessarily asking you to change your mind. I'm asking you to just consider why other people feel the way they do. Uh, and I think that'll get us to a better place in terms of um, uh, uh, how we respond to each other. And that starts with the federal government. Uh, and Mr. Um, stepping back and having some uh, respectful and, uh, and and looking for a reasonable path forward for all of us uh, through this time and to ensure that those borders remain open. Uh, with that, I'm happy to take uh, the questions in the room and, and any that are on the phone as well. You're calling on, you're calling on the um, federal government to, to be more understanding and you're calling on both sides, as it were, to be more understanding, but only one side is occupying a street in Winnipeg. Only one side is blocking border traffic. Only one side has surrounded a, a school in your constituency today. Which is, di which is different, Steve, than saying that those actions are correct. I don't think that we should be uh, saying that the blocking of, of uh, an international border is the right action. I don't think that that is the right action. I want those lanes open. I want to ensure that here in the city of Winnipeg that people can uh, live and work uh, in a reasonable way uh, and, and they have the right to live and work in a reasonable way. Um, but I do think overall that everyone has to take a bit of a step back, a little bit of a step back and go, why is it that people feel the way they do? They don't agree with them. I don't agree with blocking in, in a, a border and not allowing truckers to be able to cross into the United States. I don't agree with that. Um, but I do think that all of us have to bring the temperature down a little bit before we get to a better place of understanding. What, are you gonna, what is the government going to do to, in, to open the border, to end the occupation of the street out front of the legislature, to end the blockade of the entrance to the legislature grounds that has gone on for almost a week now? So there's a number of things that, uh, you know, that are they're difficult for the government to do, and you understand why, Steve. Uh, when it comes to the, uh, the police, um, 
governments, whether it's the city of Winnipeg, who is you know responsible for the city of Winnipeg police, um, or the federal government, frankly, when it comes to the RCMP, and I know it's a joint operation between the RCMP and Canadian Border Services at the border, um, they can't direct operations. Uh, and, and you know that, and you know why that is. And there are times, I'm sure, that there are people today who would say, well, I, you should direct uh, the police. And that might feel good today, depending on which side of this debate that you're on. Uh, but in the long run, having politicians direct police operations is not the right place to be in a democratic uh, society. So we've continued to uh, provide the resources that have been asked uh, of us as a provincial government where there are resources that are required. We'll continue to you know, engage with the federal government on what's going on at the international border, which is primarily a federal responsibility. Um, and I am encouraged by the Winnipeg Police Service's dialogue that continues on with what's uh, what's happening uh, up front, but it can't go on forever. And so, you know, there are obviously uh, different options that uh, will always be looked at and, uh, and considered. Um, but at this point, I think that uh, you know that that dialogue that's happening uh, will continue, and the police services has been engaged in that with some success, but not without some frustration. Steve, there are a lot of people who are frustrated about a lot of things. And, and I get that. I'm not going to solve everybody's frustration, but I think that we get to a place that's better uh, by taking a few steps back and just dialing down the rhetoric a little bit. Are you calling on the, the truckers outside the legislature to go home? You know, I think uh, my, my preference, of course, would be that they not be blocking uh, roadways, uh, that they not be uh, uh, honking and, and keeping people up at night. Um, I think that there's been some advances for that to happen, but I also respect the right of people to peacefully protest, which is differently than an, different than an occupation, of course. And um, you know, we have seen many people protest here at the legislature, uh, some who have, uh, have some who have stayed a while. Uh, but these things do have to end. So I I'm encouraged by some of the discussions that I've heard happen between the Winnipeg Police Service and those who are involved in the uh, in the protest, um, but uh, it, it can't go on forever. I think that a point has been made. I think that their point has been heard, uh, and, um, and, I, and I think that there's going to come a time when uh, absolutely uh, this, we have to move on from this. And I don't just mean when it comes from the protests. I mean, there's a lot of things we have to move on from uh, in society, um, but I think that uh, their point's been heard, and I hope that they'll continue to have those that dialogue with the Winnipeg Police Service about keep those roads open, give access to people who need access, uh, allow people to be able to sleep at night. And, uh, and and I think there's been some advancements there, and I'm hopeful for more. Are there resources within the province that you can tap into, um, you know, the motor vehicle branch or the, the ag department? I mean, there's farm equipment out there. Uh, is there anything more the province can do in yeah. terms of enforcement? I, we're looking at it. We're looking at what the options are uh, and what might be uh, available. Obviously, this is a unique situation, and, you know, you need to ensure that you're applying it uh, correctly, anything that you do apply. At, at this stage, uh, you know, we think that the operational side that's happening from the Winnipeg Police Service and the discussions that they're happening are happening with uh, with them is is uh, the right approach, and um, and we'll leave the operations to them. But uh, we're always looking at uh, at options uh, should they be needed. Yeah, protest outside the legislative building is lawful. Well, you know, everybody's going to get into a debate about, you know, blocking, uh, blocking a road uh, is, uh, is illegal. And yet we also know that in a, uh, in a society that's a democratic society that values both the spirit and the letter of the Charter of Rights and Freedoms, that there is the opportunity for people to express uh, unhappiness uh, with the government. And so, you know, trying to find that balance sometimes moves in between the law and the spirit of the Charter uh, so ultimately, um, you know, by the letter of the law, I think you'll find that that most protests, in some form or fashion, uh, end up breaking uh, certain uh, bylaws uh, or laws. But in a democratic society, we typically see that the right to be able to express concerns uh, about government is an important freedom. So it's never black and white. I think every protest or demonstration um, will. Uh, will uh, have some challenges when it comes to, to that line. This one is clearly it in terms of challenges, um, but uh, I think right now the right way is to continue those discussions. Previously, the Premier said that the, uh, the 
concerns that the protesters had had merit. I'm wondering if that's still the position of the government and if you think that the province's silence on the protests to date has um, encouraged the actions, including the blockade at the border. I think if I recall, um, the Premier's comments were in relation to the, uh, the vaccine mandate that was originally posed by the Trudeau government uh, and has been reciprocated in the United States uh, as well. And so our view was that, you know, look, we, we had a lot of people who, at some points who said there should be mandatory vaccination when it came to healthcare workers or education workers. Uh, our view was, and, and, and I agreed with it, that there should be some, some options. Uh, those options included testing. Not everybody likes the testing option either, um, but it's different than a, a mandatory vaccination. And so um, those were the concerns that were raised, I think, by the truckers originally. I think it's probably morphed and changed a little bit in some of, in terms of some of the uh, concerns. But the original concerns when it came to the uh, vaccine mandate across the border, um, I think, should have been uh, considered more by the the federal government. Uh, looked at what some of the evidence was, and uh, and to see whether or not there were other paths forward. But do you think that the government's uh, relative silence around the protests has encouraged the demonstrators and let and encourage the blockade at the border well you know so i think when you t relative silence uh, is a relative word and you know i hear from some folks who uh, say well you know you're you're um, you're always speaking you know against uh, the protest but there are lots of protests that happen and i hear from others who might say we're well, not saying enough about it i think what we've tried to do is try to encourage dialogue um as much as we can without giving direction between the uh, law enforcement and those officials who are engaged with the operational decisions, uh, but then to also say to those who are protesting, and I've said this many times, that um, we do respect a person's right to, to demonstrate against the government, but understand that, that there are those around you who also have rights, the right to sleep in your apartment, the right to be able to access, uh, get to work on roadways, same thing at the U.S. border. Uh, people have a right to demonstrate um, but there are truckers who are trying to earn a living and trying to get across that border and uh, and consumers who are relying on that. So I know people don't like to hear that, you know, there are there's you, know, you kind of take some balances to these things. Um, but balance obviously sometimes gets you to a solution. You rarely get to a solution where everybody says that this has to be entirely um, my solution and there can't be any other sort of uh, consideration of anything else. We're going to have to bring down some of the rhetoric and, and try to ensure that, um, that we have some sense of uh, what is a better way forward. We're going to turn to Zoom now. Thank you. A reminder to our reporters on this Zoom call, you will have one preliminary and one follow-up question. Up first this afternoon from CJOB, Skyler. Hi, Mr. Gritson. Sorry, I couldn't find the mute button there. Uh, I understand in regards to the protest at uh, the Emerson border crossing that you're hoping the federal government will take action, but there have been several incidents on Manitoba's highways um, over the last week or so, uh, most notably the one on Highway 3 that prevented uh, an elderly lady from getting timely medical care. I'm just wondering um, what the province is going to do to make sure uh, those situations don't happen again. Yeah, and I know that the RCMP spoke out in particular uh, about that incident. And, I, you know, I want to say that there are, and I'll say it again, and probably you'll get tired of hearing it, um, there is a democratic right to, to demonstrate against government. That is an expression of freedom, and, and we don't want to lose that expression of freedom ever in the society that, that we live in. Um, but countering that and balancing that are the rights of others, the right to be able to get to a hospital when you need medical uh, treatment, the right to be able to uh, live in your home uh, in, in peace, uh, those have to also be considered. And so um, I would say to those who are demonstrating and are demonstrating in ways that you know, involve you know, slow rolling or whatever they call it on, on highways, be very, very mindful of you know, where you are in terms of hospitals, in terms of other emergency um, uh, vehicles, uh, in terms of others who are signaling that they need to they need to move through because they might have some sort of an emergency, uh, we don't want to see those consequences as a right or as a result of the right to to protest. We have to be mindful of others as well. So I I know the RCMP 
Um, I think they put something out on social media regarding that and their concerns, and, and I, I know that they'll take it seriously, and I would ask those who are demonstrating uh, to be mindful of, uh, of those things uh, as well. Thank you. I uh, appreciate that. And then I guess just further to that, in your constituency, uh, as Steve pointed out, the high school in Steinbeck today uh, believed uh, that the protest outside was a threat enough that they had to go into a hold and secure situation. Uh, just wondering what your message is to those protesters. Uh, obviously, there was quite a student component there too, um, but there were adults from the community taking part in uh, there is a daycare in that school as well. It's not just uh, high school kids inside. You, you know, it's the same message, right? Um, that it's been it's been tough for for school kids. My son uh, is in school, and and it's been a tough couple of been a tough couple of years. Uh, and so I understand from a you know student's perspective, hearing his perspective, and from a parent's perspective, being being a parent. Um, but there are appropriate places, I think, to provide demonstration as adults now as students. I mean. While, while I might not agree, I don't know what, what all the cause was. I haven't heard all the details, but you know, I may or may not agree with uh, you know, protests that, that happen with students at different times. And we've seen demonstrations and climate change and different reasons why students um, you know, act out in a school in a certain way to demonstrate that they're concerned about something. Um, but you know, for those adults who are involved, I think it's important to remember that schools, hospitals, uh, you know, there, there are certain places that really aren't the appropriate place for uh, those demonstrations. And I think we have to be mindful of, of, um, of those places because, you know, there are uh, unique things happening there. There are more vulnerable populations sometimes. Uh, and it goes back to my original message that, that you may have a very strong view about something. And I don't know what all the demonstration was about at the SRSS uh, school that I graduated from. Um, but please just try to take some perspective of other people and what what some of your actions are doing and and not saying that you shouldn't uh, that you shouldn't protest or shouldn't demonstrate against government i have many of my constituents who are concerned about the actions of government i hear from them all the time uh, and that is that is fair and appropriate in a um, in a democratic society but just be mindful of the impact that you're having uh, on others as well in the short term and the long term from the Winnipeg Sun, Ryan. No, can't hear me. Hi, um, Mr. Gertzen. You said uh, we have to take the temperature down a bit. Um, what do you mean by that? Can you explain a bit more on what you mean when you say that? Kind of mean everybody. You know, like I, I mentioned specifically. Um, the prime minister and, and, you know, I've heard some, some words, I think that are sometimes unnecessarily divisive, uh, when it comes to, to speaking about people. And I don't, my prime minister and I will, I'm sure agree on some things and disagree on a lot of things. Um, but how we say things is really, really important. It's really hard to have dialogue with anybody, uh, when, uh, when the first thing you try to do is, is, you know, try to, um, you know, classify them as you know less Canadian or or, or something else, uh, and you know I, I've um, I've seen a lot of that in the last two years where uh, people are are arguing a position not based on what they you know believe in terms of how something should happen, but how they think about another person, uh, and 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 try to you know downgrade an individual or cast aspersions on an individual because they don't agree with their position. And that leads us to a place like we are today where it's very, very difficult to talk to each other. Uh, and it's really, really difficult to come to uh, some kind of a resolution or understanding. Uh, people may not believe it, but we will you know, find our way to the other side of this pandemic and we're going to have to live with each other again. Uh, and I think how we usually did that is, is Manitobans is by disagreeing on lots of things, uh, but not necessarily assuming that because you disagree with a person that the other person is a bad person. Just because a, another person doesn't have the same view that you have doesn't mean that they're uh, a bad person. You might act, believe that they're behaving badly, um, but that's different. So I'm, I'm asking people to bring down the temperature um, by, by simply doing what Manitobans almost always do. Uh, and that is to be respectful of each other, even in disagreement. And I would say the same thing to the prime minister. He's the leader of the country. He is the prime minister. He sets the tone. It's very, very important, even in disagreement, 
that that uh, he understand that he is still the prime minister for all Canadians try to find a way through this border impasse that has tremendous implications for us from an uh, uh, economic perspective uh, and for Canadians. So it's an easy thing to do. I'm not trying to be Pollyannic about this, um, but it is his responsibility as Prime Minister. Okay, and, you know, you mentioned, too, that the protesters kind of, you know, they've been heard, um, you know, and they should go home at some point. I mean, when should they go home? I, you know, I, I, it's difficult for me to set, uh, you know, a date of expectations on this. Um, but I do want to say that, you know, points have been made, points have been heard. Um, and, you know, and I, again, I've been to lots of different protests in, uh, in Manitoba, uh, observed them, not been a protester necessarily. I've, uh, I've heard many concerns from different people that I didn't always agree with, you know, but you try to listen and go... You know, what is it in that disagreement that we might be able to find some commonality and some some common ground? So uh, I'm not going to put a date on, you know, when I think somebody should go or somebody shouldn't go. I'm glad that there's been some improvement in terms of, you know, the, the noise so that residents in the area can go about and properly live their life. Um, and I think that there is still a uh, reasonable traffic flow, which is also important. And that hasn't happened in some places like Ottawa. So I'm glad for that. And I think that, you know, the communication that's happening between the protesters and the Winnipeg Police Service um, is, uh, you know, is having some dividends. And I'm glad that both of them are doing that. From CBC Radio Canada and Charlotte. Hi, um, I'd like to know if the province has been in contact with the federal government regarding what's happening at the border right now, and uh, if we can expect measures to be taken by the federal government. So uh, I was in uh, cabinet meetings this uh, this morning. I have uh, reached out to uh, uh, Minister Mendicino, reached out to my uh, colleague on the U.S. Canada Relations Committee, um, Speaker uh, Robert Cup of the Ohio uh, House in Ohio Senate in uh, in Ohio. I know that the Premier uh, has been in contact uh, with the Mayor um, uh, today and, and regularly. Uh, I've been in contact with Marcus Chambers, who's the chair of the uh, Winnipeg uh, Police Services Board. Uh, so there has been, you know, significant uh, contact, and I know that they'll continue to be uh, contact, and we've offered what assistance we can in terms of, of resources, recognizing that operationally this is a police matter. And what the province can do to to limit the impact of what's happening right now? Well, I mean, when it comes to the the border itself, of course, you know, the border is uh, is federally uh, managed. It'll be a joint operation between the RCMP and the Canadian Border Services uh, because there's shared jurisdiction there. Um, but you know, we will continue to to offer the assistance that we can. But I do think that there needs to be that ability. Uh, nationally to to begin uh, some discussion that uh, tries to unify and bring Canadians um, back together, uh, not in complete agreement, um, but also not believing that um, that some people are are less Canadian or uh, you know haven't been contributors to our Canadian society in the past or won't be in the future because they will, and we're all going to have to live together at some point again. Uh, and uh, the more that we can understand that now, I think the easier that's going to be. From CBC Manitoba, Marina. Good afternoon, Minister. You said the federal government needs to engage with protesters. We have repeatedly asked if the Premier or any ministers have been in touch with the ones that are here in Manitoba. Have you or any senior government officials been in direct conversation with the protesters, either at the legislature, at the school, or at the border? So my call is uh, for the uh, federal government to start, uh, first of all, bringing down the temperature, uh, start to engage with what some of the concerns are and how they can be, uh, be worked through. Uh, the federal government will determine, you know, those are those are the goals, those have to be the objectives. How that's achieved is uh, something that uh, they'll determine. Um, I believe that a letter from the demonstrators uh, went to the Premier uh, yesterday in terms of uh, the request for, for a meeting. Uh, I imagine that that's still uh, in consideration at this point. 
uh, but the communications has been quite quite good between the Winnipeg Police Service and the demonstration, uh, which has, uh, I think, been positive and hasn't always been the case uh, in other places. So to date, have any senior government officials been in direct conversation with the protesters? So the, the letter, I think, was received yesterday uh, by, by government, and, uh, you know, there'll be consideration about um, communications. Communication has been good between the Winnipeg Police Service and the demonstrators and uh, I think any other sort of uh, uh, contact uh, has just been uh, requested very recently. From the Globe and Mail, Carrie. Hi, thanks for taking my question. Minister, you talked about how you want the Trudeau government to engage with protesters to bring down the temperature, to engage with their concerns. Are you suggesting that the federal government negotiate with protesters? No, what I've said is I think that they need to engage in this issue. And there are different ways, you know, to do that. Uh, we as a government, the provincial government in Manitoba, early on when it came to the vaccine mandates, you know, said that there should be an examination of what other options uh, that there are. Uh, and that engagement uh, isn't, you know, it's not for me to say whether or not, uh, you know, how the federal government reaches that objective in terms of trying to ensure that the temperature comes down, uh, trying to find a way to manage our way through an issue and keep those borders open. Um, but engagement can take a lot of different forms. Sometimes it's just engaging the issue to go, how is it that we can come to a different solution uh, and, uh, and keeping those borders open and, and uh trying to address some of the concerns that exist. So again, engagement isn't uh, always about face-to-face um, -face, uh, discussions. It can happen in lots of different ways, but the federal government has to engage in a way to get to that point. Minister, taking all that, it sounds as though you're placing all of this on the idea that the protests are based on the federal, or pardon me, on the cross-border vaccine mandate for truckers. People are protesting provincial mandates and federal, but largely it all comes back to provincial. What is your government doing and why then do you bump all of this on the Trudeau government when provincial mandates are key? Yeah, I, I don't think that I bumped it all on the, on the Trudeau government. Uh, certainly when it comes to the international border, um, that is a federal responsibility. Uh, and so I think that it started, a lot of the protests started, as a result of, uh, of a vaccine mandate across the international border that we indicated early on uh, could be problematic, both from a supply chain issue and other, other issues. Um, but regardless, that there should be some uh, engagement to see if there are other ways, like Manitoba did, to try to achieve uh, what the goals were. Uh, if you only go in with one solution, then you usually only come out with one outcome. So that was our, uh, that was our hope early on. When it comes to provincial mandates, uh, in Manitoba, uh, you will likely know that the uh, provincial government reduced restrictions on Tuesday of this week, I believe it was. Uh, Dr. Rustin, our chief provincial public health officer in Manitoba, indicated that he believed that uh, all restrictions um, could be lifted by spring, which uh, I guess spring starts uh, in a few weeks. Uh, and uh, I think you'll hear more details about that um, tomorrow. From CTV National News, Jill. Good afternoon, Minister Gertzen. I'm actually in Emerson, and uh, these protesters have porta potties and uh, you know trailers and campers, and it looks like they're going to be here for the long haul. How much time does Manitoba have here? With these, this is a border where 1,000 trucks pass every day. Yeah, thanks, uh, thanks, Jill. And uh, you know, I, I haven't seen the, the details that you're seeing on uh, on the scene there, but I am concerned uh, that this is going to uh, go on a long time, uh, and in a way that is going to have reputational damage to Manitoba and to Canada. Uh, that's going to have economic damage. I can tell you, in my role on the Canada-U.S. Relations Committee over a decade, done a lot of work in terms of, terms of trying to ensure that that border, I don't mean just at, at Emerson, I mean uh, uh, throughout Canada, uh, remains active and open, you know, doing things on pre-clearance and a lot of different things to ensure that our business partners in the United States, that so we can continue to trade. And you will know that there are some in the United States who don't want to have free and open trade on everything when it comes to 
uh, to Canadians and, and the work that we do. Uh, and uh, we can't be giving them reasons to, uh, to make their case that we're not a reliable uh, partner. Uh, that's putting on my role on the, in the International Relations uh, Committee uh, together with Senator uh, Cup in Ohio. So it can't go on uh, for a long time. We need to be able to ensure that, that, that the border is open. Doesn't mean there can't be demonstrations and people can't make their points, uh, but we have to allow those truckers to be able to get uh, goods into the United States and, and others to come back. All right, and you've also mentioned multiple times the public health announcement coming tomorrow. These people are not leaving until the mandates end. Is this something they're going to want to watch tomorrow? I think every time uh, our Premier speaks, people should watch. Oh, my goodness. Okay, thank you. We now return to the News Conference Theatre. It, it, it does sound like you're putting a lot of the weight here on the federal government. And the protesters here want the province to remove all mandates immediately. Uh, we saw some of the earlier demands at the start of this uh, protest outside the legislature. They want Rusin fired, some of them. They're, they're making these requests, and, and you seem to be suggesting that there's some halfway point that might appease them. Um, what, what do you think the province should do? So I think you're, you're probably conflating two different things, Steve. So there's, you know, the protest is happening at the U.S.-Canadian border, which clearly uh, is essentially a federal responsibility because it's a Canada-U.S. border. Um, and it was largely uh, started as a result of the vaccine mandate, which our province early on said uh, that we should be looking at other alternatives because there could be, you know, negative consequences to otherwise. I'm not sure that people are imagining this, but it was certainly indicated early on that that should be uh, reconsidered. When it comes to uh, mandates in the province, I mean, it's been indicated that decisions uh, are going to be made based on the, uh, the health situation in Manitoba. That will be the deciding factor uh, in terms of how um, decisions are made, and, that, and that's how it should be. Uh, I mean, at some point, um, we will be without mandates and we'll be without restrictions. I suspect that there might be some people who say, well, hang on now, we think we should have some and maybe they'll protest for, for restrictions. Uh, but on either side, uh, the decision has to be made based on evidence. And the evidence um, that we're seeing right now is that um, we're certainly on, on the better side of the Omicron wave. Dr. Rusin indicated, uh, well, I think it was several weeks ago, it, it feels like several weeks ago, before there was a protest, I believe, um, that uh, he believed the restrictions um, could be able to be lifted by spring, and we're fast approaching spring. And, um, and uh, so to the extent that there uh, have been concerns about uh, restrictions or mandates, uh, we're clearly moving in the right direction. The speed at which that uh, direction is moved in will be you know, determined by the evidence that we have. Uh, and you'll hear more about that, I think, tomorrow. Some the people the government used to, um, it, I understand the, there was a different premier at the time, but a few years ago this government a few. expressed a, alarm at uh, railway blockades and hi, a, a temporary highway blockade um, over Indigenous issues. And a bill was brought forward to allow for the quick removal of any obstruction of critical infrastructure. That, that bill was withdrawn. It, sound, it, it, it comes across now that the government is sounding less concerned with an immediate resolution to these blockades that, are, that we're seeing now. Well, I'm not sure that they're always analogous, right? So if you're talking about you know, blockading, uh, and I don't remember exactly all the details, I do remember in general the situation, but if you're talking about blockading a railroad where a train can't pass, um, you know, that feels a little different than on what's happening on Broadway where cars are still moving. Um, but, I mean, you know, if the border is, uh, is entirely closed and, uh, and there aren't, uh, you know, the ability to move um, any goods across, which I don't think is the situation today, that's not what I've heard, I understood that, because I was, you know, asking particularly about livestock, I understood that, that those livestock trucks were still going through uh, the border, but clearly, you know, an entire shutdown of the border, uh, you know, at some point would, uh, would result in... Uh, uh, other, other action, I would believe. This will be the last question. I'm wondering, um, Minister, you know, you mentioned that tomorrow there'll be uh, an announcement or, or some information given by the Premier and Dr. Bruson on the public health restrictions. Um, you know, 
I'm not sure what they're going to say, but are you worried that some people might look at what's happening with this protest and, and think you know, anything that's announced might be a response to that and not a response to the actual science and data that we're seeing related to the... the they they might have if, uh, if Dr. Rusin hadn't been out uh, a few weeks ago and it already clearly indicated the direction that Manitoba was happening, and I believe it was before there was any issues up front of, of the legislature. So he gave uh, you know, a very clear indication uh, at that time when he was out with the Premier uh, where he believed things were going based on the evidence. Uh, I think what you're seeing now in terms of you know, other evidence, that's continuing on. I'll let him speak about the details uh, of that. Uh, but I think it's really, really important to remember, because that's a very, very good question, uh, Joss, that, that Dr. Rusin sat at this table and indicated that he believed that uh, restrictions and, ma and uh, mandates uh, could be lifted by spring, which we're getting close to, um, if we continued on that path. So I think that he'll determine whether or not we're still on that path in, in the announcement that he and the Premier uh, have, and um, I look forward to hearing that as well. But um, remember that, that that announcement predated what you're seeing outside, I believe. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Good to see you all again.